I want to get back to this June jobs report. Joining us now, Kevin Hassett, chairman of the White House Council of Economic Advisors. Kevin, uh, another pretty good report. In fact, yes. on, on Wall Street, they're calling a Goldilocks report. On Main Street, maybe not uh, as excited because of the wage numbers. Give us your, your assessment on it. Actually, I think it's a great report. If uh, you look at the jobs creation, we have yet another month right around 215,000, which is the average for the year. Uh, if you look at the wage picture, uh, then the thing that really jumped out at me is the average weekly earnings went up 3%. So they went up at a very healthy pace, which means that because there's maybe it's getting a little bit harder to find workers, the, the employers are asking their workers to work longer hours. And so take home pay is going up. Uh, hourly earnings, as you mentioned, were a little bit disappointing. Uh, on the unemployment rate side, it did go from 3.8 to 4, but that was all because of increased labor force participation. And, and that's like the best sign there is in this jobs report, right? Because what we want to do is reconnect people that were discouraged by the bad economy that President Trump inherited. And we want to bring them back into society, get them jobs, get them back to work. I, and it's clear that that's, you know, really the main message of this report is it, the almost the stampede back into the labor market. Kevin, I do agree with that. Uh, you know, I think that we had gotten to a place where there were a lot of people who had given up on, on this economy and right. the idea that they could actually participate in it. So to me, this is the ultimate sign of optimism in America. 601,000 people coming back to the job market. But we sure. do obviously have a problem because you've got 6.7 million job openings, 6.4 million people in the labor pool. And, and still, you know, anecdotally, these wages should be a lot higher. Uh, folks point to the, to the skills problem. I know there's been talk in this White House about somehow trying to influence education, more vocational education, things like that. Is there anything that this White House can do to help with this, this skills gap problem, which is really a chronic problem at this point? Well, it's really all of the above, but the main point right now that we're seeing in the data is that what normally happens in a cycle is that you get close to full employment. I'm not exactly sure what number that is. You know, the said so, says 4.6, so we're below it. But you get close to full employment, and then employers invest in making the workers they have more productive, right? And so you give your worker a better machine, and then you don't need to hire another guy because the guy you already have is more productive. And so you want to see, at the end of a cycle, a capital spending boom, which increases worker productivity and wages. And indeed, if you look at the times in history where income inequality has dropped the most, it's been exactly Exactly at that point in the cycle where capital spending booms happen and productivity and wages go up. And so we just passed the tax cut, don't forget. It's, we just had the six-month anniversary right. last week. And the tax cut is causing a capital spending boom. It's very clearly in the data. And that capital spending boom should have the normal cyclical effect. And that's going to take a lot of the pressure off employers. Ke Ke uh, because you're right, because you know, there are more job openings right now than unemployed workers. Ke Ke Kevin, hold mm -hmm. on one second. I'm going to let you end. Uh, I just want to ask you, you mentioned machinery. I've got the 818 things that the uh, tariffs went to effect last night. I mean, it's a pretty long list, right? A, a lot of this list, stuff yeah. has machinery on it. A lot of this stuff has, you know, things. I mean, we don't have to have a, pl uh, a TV made in China, right? The average American can skip that. But some folks are saying these 818 things, they all can't be skipped. And invariably, that means we can't avoid consumers and businesses paying higher prices. What do you say to the American public with respect to, hey, it's got, obviously, if it is a trade war or it was a, a harsh trade skirmish, there's going to be a short-term period of pain for some folks. Well, I don't know about short-term pain, but I do know that the president promised the American people that he would fight for them, that he would fight to make the trade deals fair and reciprocal. And we're moving in that direction. You know, I, I mean, he's going to, I think, in the next few months, you're going to see a lot of uh, improved deals uh, that stop this uh, game that we are, we've been in for years and years and years that disadvantage American workers. Uh, you know, foreign countries putting up non-tariff barriers and big tariffs that are much different from ours basically denying our firms and our workers access to their markets. And so the president is moving the world towards a positive equilibrium. But you're right. Right now, you can see in markets sometimes that there's anxiety about, sure. well, is it going to work out? Are we going to have a happy end? But as an economist, what I have to do, right, is look at the data. And so one of the things I was watching closely in the jobs report today, which you guys could find and pull up, I'm sure, in a minute, is what's going on in downstream uh, metal-using industries, because the steel and aluminum tariffs have been in effect. And so if you thought that, that those yeah, tariffs would be really I, disruptive, I, let me just finish, right? The, the point is that downstream industries actually saw employment go up uh, in the last month. And so that right now in the data, I'm not seeing signs that the tariffs are causing the kind of disruptions that some fear. Okay. I just think it's dangerous, though, when you want to cherry pick certain things. If we're, if we're going to be honest with the American public, say, hey, this, that's is, something cherry that, this is something that, that's, that's necessary. And for some folks, there will be pain. Uh, and, but we hope it's short lived. My question is, though, we saw other presidents try something similar to this, maybe George Bush, and he gave up on it. Is this, is this administration now committed to this tariff pushback against the world, particularly China, 
or will they blink if it gets too tough? Look, President Trump wrote the art of the deal. He's committed to making better deals. He's going to deliver better deals. And right now, uh, he's called the bluff of other countries that have basically been right. abusing our firms and abusing our workers for a long time. And, but he wants better deals. And, and the OECD, just a couple of weeks ago, put out a study of what would happen to the world economy and the U.S. economy if Trump's vision of fully reciprocal trade deals were realized. And, of course, it was better for everybody. I and so as you're worried about the short-run stress, you should understand that the long-run goal is an extremely Worthy one. I'm with you. Listen, first of all, congratulations. You guys have done a remarkable job with this economy. A great job to port. We want to see those wages get better. I just want to make sure that you guys are committed to winning this war, and it sounds like you are. Kevin are. has it. Thank you very much. Really, really appreciate it.